Hey everybody, Homicide Henry here, and in today's video, we're taking a first look at a brand new Pokemon in the world of Pokemon Go, Volcarona. Now, Volcarona evolves from Larvesta, which is a very rare hatch in the current event. I was lucky enough to hatch one, so I decided to invest over 400 rare candy to evolve and power it up so we can test it out and see how it performs. Volcarona is an extreme glass cannon, meaning it can output massive damage, but that's balanced by it being extremely glassy. So without further ado, let's up into the matches and check out Volcarona in action in the Ultra League. Humping at the first match and Giratina Origin into Trevenant. Honestly, a bit of an awkward matchup since we both are hitting each other for super effective damage. I'm going to overfarm, so does my opponent, and I'm going to bait with an ominous win, hoping to try and grab his shield from my opponent, and I'm able to do so. I farm up, switch, and catch a move onto Registeel. I tank whatever they throw here. They were baiting with the Seed Bomb, so that is fantastic news for me. They farm up a ton of energy with the Trevenant, and are now going to send in a Shadow Swampert. Swampert going to be immediately met with a Focus Blast, and that's going to deal quite a lot of damage. Shadow Swampert continuing to farm up Registeel, makes Focus Blast number two. They have a lot of energy here. Are they willing to commit the final shield? Yes, they are. So not only did we bait out the water type, we were able to grab shields and shields down. Volcarona only has nuke moves and it has an incredibly high attack stat, so it is quite scary in the end game. We switch and make a catch, catching the Hydro Cannon onto our Giratina Origin. They have a ton of energy on their Swampert, so I decide to actually let this go. And instead, I'm gonna wait the clock and then send back in my Registeel. I'm not too far off a move. I send in the Registeel. They bring in the Trevenant. I'm not going to get KO'd by a Seed Bomb. They have to Shadow Ball. They go for the Seed Bomb. I would have made the Zap Cannon, so they're forced to go for Seed Bomb number two. So not only do I have two shields, this now sets up Volcarona for a huge farm down. I wasn't quite sure how much energy they had left with, so I will commit the shield. Apparently, they were just shy of the Shadow Ball. That's very unfortunate, but now I have an energy lead and a shield advantage. Let's see what they have in the back. It's Galarian Stunfisk, Volcarona, farming up, going for the overheat, overheat, one shots the XLG Fisk, in comes the Swampert, it cannot get to the back-to-back -back moves, Volcarona makes overheat number two, goodbye Swampert, and that is a good game. Moving into the next match, leading Giratina Origin into Tapu Fini. Now, this is a pretty interesting matchup, as Giratina is able to outpace Fini and deal a lot more fast move pressure, but Fini, of course, has the ability to land that super effective Moonblast that absolutely shreds Giratina Origin. They have overfarmed a massive amount of energy here. I decide to commit the shield, and I get baited with a Surf. Absolutely terrible. I'm going to look to overfarm and fire off the Ominous Wind. Ominous Wind will be lethal from this health range. Opponent is going to shield, and now I have to make a decision. Are they going to double bait? I decide to let it through. It's the Surf. Opponent now going to pivot into their own Registeel. I'm going to farm up and go for the Shadow Ball. I'm wanting to try and get some damage off onto my opponent's Reggie. Shadow Ball is able to connect. I continue to farm. They're going to be firing off a Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon will get the Giratina low, but Giratina will be able to hang on. Unfortunately, I do get debuffed, so I'm going to bank the Shadow Ball for later and send in my own Reggie. They have the energy lead. They're going to outpace. They make it to the Focus Blast, and that deals quite a bit of damage. I'm going to farm up and return fire with a Focus Blast of my own. This will be lethal decision time for my opponent. They expend the final shield. Now, that puts me in an interesting spot. Am I willing to give up the final shield here? I am not. I'm going to let this go and instead send in Volcarona. Volcarona looking for the farm down. Registeel does make it to a charge move. I will commit the shield. A Zap Cannon would hit for a massive amount of damage. And they do get the attack debuff. That's a bit unfortunate. My opponent sends in Trevenant. And they make a beautiful catch, catching the overheat onto Tapu Fini. My attack is now minus three. I'm still able to make it to the overheat. Let's see how much an overheat does when it's three stages debuffed. It's still almost one shots. And to add insult to injury, we get the catch onto the Giratina. Volcarona farms down. And that's game over. Picking up a favorable lead in the next match, Giratina Origin into Shadow Swampert. Considering how weak I am to Swampert in the back, I'm definitely happy to see the Swampert on the lead. I'm going to farm up to the Shadow Ball and bait with the Ominous Wind, but my opponent calls the bait, and that puts me in a really tough spot here. They have enough for the Earthquake. I shield, and I shield a bait. That's really not good. I go for the Ominous Wind. I lose CMP, and at this point, I can't afford to give up two shields. I let this through. Opponent went for a double bait, anticipating the shield, 
so a bit of luck does end up going my way. Ominous Wind will get the shield. My opponent is going to send in their own Tina. I farm up, switch, and I'm able to make the catch onto the Registeel. Catching the Dragon Claw, and now Registeel is locked in a matchup with Giratina, and I've saved some energy on my own Tina for later in the match. They're going to spam out Shadow Sneaks in this matchup. Shadow Sneak not dealing a lot of damage, but neither is my Resistance Zap Cannon. So this is a battle of attrition and one that does not go quickly. I'm able to get a key attack debuff on my first Zap Cannon, which is quite nice, as that should hopefully help tilt the Zero Shield matchup into my favor. Shadow Sneak is going to connect. I continue to farm up, go for the Zap Cannon, and the Zap Cannon is going to start to get the Giratina low. Zap Cannon is going to connect. In comes the Swampert. I switch too late and I end up catching a Hydro Cannon. That is really bad. Hydro Cannon KOs. I'm forced to send in Registeel and suddenly everything going wrong in this matchup. They go for the Hydro. It KOs. And now it's all up to Volcarona. Volcarona cannot farm down without taking a move. And I'm too glassy. I have to commit the shield here. Hydro Cannon will be shielded. What do they have in the back? They have Cresselia. So it was even a good matchup for Volcarona in the back. But down a shield. I cannot win this. Volcarona is just too glassy. My opponent soaks the energy on Cress because they know they can finish the fight with Giratina. Dragon Claw from Giratina has never done more damage than it does now. As two Dragon Claws basically KO the Volcarona and that's game over. Next game we see a familiar lead Giratina Origin into Trevenant. As before this is a bit of an awkward matchup. I'm gonna farm up go for the ominous win bait but unfortunately I do lose CMP to Trevenant. I commit the shield and I'm shielding a lot of baits today. My opponent goes for the seed bomb and I commit the shield. Very unfortunate. I return fire with an ominous wind bait. I'm going to farm up with my Tina. Look for the catch, but it's a simultaneous switch. Registeel into Registeel. I go for the focus blast and it turns out that I actually win CMP. So my opponent must have a traded Registeel as I do have the rank one raid IV Registeel. My opponent is going to fire off a focus blast of their own. I'm going to no shield that since I know that I win CMP. MP, I can just go for the Focus Blast right away, and this is going to KO, so if my opponent wants to land another charge move, they will have to invest a shield. They're going to let that through. They send in Cobalion. Cobalion, this is a bit awkward, because Cobalion, of course, does have access to Stone Edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send in Giratina, because I have energy, and I'm going to start firing off charge moves as I need to deal some damage onto Cobalion. Shadow Ball is going to connect. Cobalion farming up. And the Stone Edge will be lethal here. I'm just going to let this go and put my faith into Volcarona. Volcarona looking for the fire spin down. Cobalion makes a charge move. Is this the Stone Edge? I think they're one short. I let it through. It's the Sacred Sword. And that will prove to be the game winning no shield as Trevenant is too low. They can bait with a seed bomb, but they will not make the Shadow Ball. And that's a good game. Picking up a positive lead in the next match, Giratina Origin into Registeel. I'm more than happy to stay in this matchup. I hit for neutral where they hit for resisted. I go for the Shadow Ball, but my opponent makes an incredible catch, catching the Shadow Ball onto Pidgeot. I do want this energy for later, so I'm actually going to rebank that Shadow Ball and send in the Registeel. They have a massive energy lead, but thankfully everything they throw is going to be resisted. They go for the Feather Dance right off the bat. They're just looking to lower my attack, and they're going to be able to do so again. Now my attack is going to be four stages debuffed, the most it can possibly be lower. I'm going to be firing off the Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon, unfortunately, now that it's four stages debuffed, will not be enough to KO. I continue to farm up with the Registeel. Their timer comes up, and my opponent is playing this extremely well. They can now land the Focus Blast. My Switch Clock is not yet up. I'm forced to throw a quad debuffed move, and I'm in an extremely tough spot here. So this Focus Blast just does absolutely nothing. I'm going to farm up, send back in my Giratina, and go for the Shadow Ball. These timers being misaligned is really, really making things difficult in this game. They're going to go for the Zap Cannon. I will be able to tank this. Zap Cannon does get the attack debuff. That is not great. I'm looking for the farm down. Opponent makes another charge move here. I'm going to let this go. I should be able to tank this. And I'm looking for the farm down. But my opponent again takes advantage of the timers. Sends in the Pidgeot and snipes with a Feather Dance. I'm going to send in Volcarona. Looking for the farm down. But they had so much energy. They make the Feather Dance. And now I'm debuffed. I'm down a shield, and I'm in a very rough spot. I can reset the debuff with Registeel. They have Cobalion. I'm going to bait with the Zap Cannon here, needing a debuff and a shield. Zap Cannon gets the shield, does not get the debuff. This is going to be tough. 
They do have enough for the Stone Edge here. I have to call a bait. I know shield, they bait with the sacred sword. Maybe I have a chance, but my opponent gets the catch onto the Reggie Steel. And unfortunately, I will not be winning this game as Kobalion can just go straight sacred sword thanks to that devastating catch. And that's game over. Picking up a great lead in the next match, Giratina Origin into Shadow Nidoqueen. And even better, my opponent is staying in here. At this point, I've had too many Ominous Winds No Shield, and so I'm just going straight for the Shadow Ball. I want big damage or the shield. Shadow Ball, able to land. In comes a Wall Rain save switch. I farm up, look for the Icicle Spear catch, but my opponent shows fantastic patience, able to hang on to their energy, and now they get to connect with an Earthquake. I do tank an Earthquake, and then I'm going to return fire with the Zap Cannon. This will hit for massive, super effective damage. My opponent commits the shield, and I get the attack drop. Honestly, I should have shielded the first Earthquake, as that's going to do more than the future Earthquakes now that they have been debuffed. I commit the shield, so definitely not the most optimal shield usage there, as I should have shielded the first one. But either way, I commit the shield, return fire with a Zab Cannon, and I get their final shield. I just wanted shields down for Volcarona. At this point, I'm just going to save my shield for Volcarona as well. My opponent baits with an Icicle Spear, and that is incredibly fortunate for me, as now I can deal the Death Blow with the Zab Cannon, and I have Switch Advantage and Shield Advantage. In comes Jellicent, farming up, switching, and I get the Snipe with the Shadow Ball. This does not one-shot, but it deals a lot of damage. Jellicent is going to return fire onto my Giratina. I will commit the shield. I want to force the Nido Queen to throw its energy. Back in comes the Nido. They're firing off a charge move here. Nido Queen is running Stone Edge, and they're going to get the farm down. But I can send in Volcarona. They will not make the Stone Edge. Opponent sends back in Jellicent. Jellicent farming up, losing CMP to Volcarona. Volcarona able to KO a very low health Jellicent, but a Jellicent nevertheless, and get the win. Picking up a very tough lead in the next match, Giratina into Gliscor. Honestly, Gliscor is a problem for this entire team, as it can hit the entire team for super effective damage. So I'm just going to stay in with the Giratina and try and output as much damage as I possibly can. As I mentioned before, I've had too many Ominous Winds no shielded, so at this point, I'm just going straight for the nuke. My opponent will commit the shield, they're going for another Night Slash, but I will be able to tank this because they're non-shadow, and I make the Shadow Ball as well. This will not KO, but it's going to get them low. Shadow Ball connects. My opponent will get the farm down, and I'm going to send in Registeel. I decide to commit the shield, as Earthquake would do quite a lot of damage, and then look for the lock on farm down. My opponent baits me with a Night Slash, and they make the Earthquake with a sliver of HP remaining. What a beautiful play pattern there from my opponent. My opponent is going to send in their own Reggie Steel, and I'm going for the Focus Blast right off the bat. Focus Blast is able to connect, farming up, trying to make it to Focus Blast number two, but I lose CMP, and that is really, really unfortunate. They go for the Focus Blast. I do commit the final shield. I'm hoping my opponent will shield as well. That way, maybe I can catch a Focus Blast onto Volcarona, but they let it go, and it's Jellicent in the back. And unfortunately, there's just nothing I can do as Volcarona just gets shredded here. Look how much damage that Shadow Ball does. Volcarona is just so glassy. That was a neutral Shadow Ball, and it just got absolutely torn to shreds. I'm going for the Overheat here. Overheat still does quite a lot of resisted damage, but unfortunately, not nearly enough. My opponent could have no shielded and still won, but they commit the shield, farm all the way down, and now, unfortunately, they get the Shadow Ball the Reggie Steel and get the win. Hopping into the final match, leading Giratina Origin into another Glide score, but this time it is Shadow. As I mentioned, this is a thoroughly miserable Pokemon for this entire team to see. Gliscor going for the Night Slash right off the bat. Since they're a Shadow, they can actually KO with the second Night Slash, which is not the best. Here, I'm going to farm up, go straight for the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball lands, but I'm just going to shield, and I intend on fully Shadow Clawing them down. I don't really have a lot of fast move pressure against Gliscor in the back. My opponent saves switch is Trevenant, and I respond with Volcarona. But here, unfortunately, is where a lot of the problems with Volcarona come to light. While it is very attack weighted, it can't really farm stuff down, so it does have to throw a charge move. And since it only has nuke charge moves, it's a pretty safe shield for the opponent. So in situations where the opponent has shields, Volcarona struggles quite a bit. As you can see here, Trevenant can just match shields 
get the KO, and unfortunately, my Bug and Fire type just lost to a Grass type. In the back, my opponent has a Lowland Ninetales, firing off the Shadow Ball, and now I send in Registeel. My opponent sends in Shadow Gliscor. Gliscor trying to make it to the Earthquake. I'm going to be firing off the Zap Cannon here, hoping for a potential attack fall. Zap Cannon does get the debuff, and that is incredibly fortunate luck for me, as they can now go for the Earthquake, but this is now debuffed, meaning that I'm able to tank it and survive a Weather Ball. They need the Dazzling Gleam, and they cannot get there. Ready Steel, Focus Blast, secures the win. And now some final thoughts on Volcarona. First off, I do think that Niantic made some pretty big mistakes with how they released this Pokemon. Larvesta is a 400 candy evolution, and they've made Larvesta absurdly rare to hatch from eggs. So even if you are lucky enough to hatch one, unless you happen to have 400 candy lying around like I did, you're not going to be able to build it for a very long time. When it comes to Volcarona and its viability in PvP, while it can output a tremendous amount of damage, ultimately its extreme glassiness and the fact that it only has new charge moves definitely does hold it back a bit. So while it can be a fun pick, unfortunately it falls more in the territory of spice than something I would recommend building. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.